This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the uh, second lecture on inventories. On the in the first lecture, I went through the debits credits, but as I said at the end, the really important thing for the exam, which you're bound to be tested on, are the rules relating to how we actually value inventory. Uh, as I said, at the end of the year, you see, we'll count how many items we've got in inventory. But having counted them, it's then a question of how do we actually put a value on them? And then we can do the double entries. Uh, and the rules are in accounting standard number two. We don't need the numbers of these rules. Uh, but there are two important rules, and the first rule, which I'll deal with in this lecture, is that we must value at the lower of two things, the cost and what we call the net realisable value. Now, I need to say a little bit more about exactly what we mean by cost and net realisable value. Um, if I'm buying and selling desks, then cost basically is what you paid for it. And the realisable value is basically what you expect to sell it for. Uh, and normally, of course, you expect to sell things for more than they cost. Otherwise, you're going to be losing money. And so if I buy and sell desks, if they cost me $10 and the selling price, I intend to sell them at 50 and appreciate I haven't sold them yet, they're in inventory, but I've paid 10, I'm going to sell them for 15. Well, you must value at the lower of the two, you must value them at 10. Uh, because otherwise, you'd be taking profit when they haven't actually been sold. You know, I think I'm going to sell them for 15. We may end up selling them for different than 15. I only record the profit when they are actually sold. Anything in inventory must be valued at the lower, they must be valued at cost. However, although that's normally going to be the case, suppose I was going round counting my desks, Again, they cost $10, but I see that one of the desks is damaged. Maybe rain came in and damaged it or something. And so that desk, I'm going to have to sell cheap. It's damaged, I'm not gonna throw it away. I think somebody will buy it, but because it's damaged, I think they're only going to be prepared to pay $8 for it. Well, although hopefully that doesn't happen very often, but if ever there's an item where you expect you'll be selling it for less than cost, you must value it at the lower, which in that case would be $8. We haven't sold it yet, so we haven't yet lost any money. But as soon as you see that you think you are going to lose money, effectively we take account of it. You must value each item at the lower of cost and net realisable value. So, you know, if I have 100 uh, desks in inventory, if 99 of them are OK, those 99 would be valued at $10. But if uh, the other one is the damaged one, and I'm going to sell cheaper, that one would be valued at $8. You must value at the lower of the two. Now, I said I needed to say slightly more about what we mean by cost and net realisable value. Cost is what we've spent so far. Um, and, you know, the date of what we're doing the statements. Now, what I mean by that is that maybe my desks Uh, maybe the desks I buy 
uh, for ten dollars, uh, we then spend an extra one dollar delivering to customers. So ultimately, uh, it's costing me eleven dollars, but. Uh, the data of the statement, if these desks are in inventory, I've spent the $10 to buy them. Uh, I haven't yet spent the other dollar. I'll only spend that when I deliver them to customers. And if it's still in the inventory, we haven't spent the extra dollar. So uh, even though ultimately it will cost me 11 as at the date of the statement, I've only spent 10 That's what we mean by the cost. The net realizable value is the final selling price less any extra costs there will be. Could have written that better, but still. So suppose these desks, I'm buying them for 10. I'm going to spend an extra dollar delivering to customers, and the selling price I expect to be 15. Well, as I've already said, for valuation purposes, the cost is 10. That's what I've spent so far. The net realizable value. Is the 15 I expect to sell them for less any future costs that are going to be before I sell them? Well, although I haven't spent it yet, I will have to spend an extra dollar when I come to deliver them. And so the net realizable value would be 14. And again, you value at the lower of the two, which in this case would be the $10. So be careful, net realizable value, final selling price, but the, any future costs will be, it may be the costs that will be of delivering them, which I haven't spent yet, but we'll have to. Or maybe we have to spend money on packing them. They're not packing, packed yet, but we will have to pack them and it'll cost money before we sell them. Uh, or it could be, uh, they cost me 10, but before I sell them, maybe some of them need a bit of work doing repairing. We haven't spent that money yet, but we will have to. Well, fine. We'd subtract it to get the net realizable value. So I hope I'm uh, making that clear, but just look at that little example, example four. Um, closing entry as follows with three different products A with 100 units. Uh, the cost per unit, PU is per unit. So far is 10. Uh, so there's the cost, it's how much you've spent so far. There are going to be further costs to be incurred, and the final selling price per unit again is 15. So the net realizable value 15 less these extra costs we're going to have to spend. 15 minus 3 is 12. And so they'll be valued at the lower of the two, uh, 10. In total, since there are 100 units, they'd be valued at 1,000. What about B? Uh, so far, they've cost us $12. So we're going to spend an extra five, not spent yet, and then sell them for 16. So the net realizable value is 16 minus five, which is 11. We have to value the lower of the two, which would be 11. And how many units are there? 200? 2,200. And finally, C. There are 150 units. The cost so far is $6. The net realizable value will sell them for 11. 
Uh, but there have been another four costs before we sell them. The net realizable value is seven. Value at the lower of the two, which is six, and 150 units, which is 900. So the total is what? Total value, 4,100. That's what you do your debits credits on. So I hope that's clear, but do remember one thing I said before, uh, that each unit effectively separately, you know, say my previous little example, which I think I, I erased, if I had 100 units, look at A, for instance, A, I have 100 units, uh, suppose 99 of them were fine, cost 10, Net realizable value 12, fine, those 99 will be valued at 10. But if one of them, if the other one was damaged and its net realizable value was only 6, that one unit will be valued at 6, even though the other 99 will be valued at 10. Alright, so that's the first rule in. Um, the accounting standard, always value the lower cost net realizable value. The second rule, though, takes a little bit more work, is how we decide what the cost actually is. Now, if you're wondering why that's a problem, well, I'll explain why in the next lecture and how we deal with it.